Your life. Okay. So it is. We're we're live. All right. <laughs> Friday night, and, and we didn't even rehearse this. Yeah. <laughs> no. Obviously. <laughs> well, we never do. So it is uh, Friday night fun with the Rotens. We're back. It is. Um, What's the date today? The 11th. The 11th. Yeah, January yeah. 11th. So, yeah. um, hope you guys had a great week. Uh, hope you guys are tuning in. We have people coming in yet. Good. Um, I want to go over several things tonight, but first we want to do a, a like an intro. What? Well, let them come in. Yeah. We want to do a little bit of an intro. So, Dad, if you want to give them an update on you and... How the knees are doing? An update on me? Well, actually, the knees are doing pretty good. I, uh, as, as you may or may not know, I've been uh, walking a mile or more a day. I've got a little track uh, laid out around the property here. And uh, today, for the first time, uh, first time ever since I've had my knees replaced, I did a little jogging. I didn't do much, but I did enough that... Uh, that I could feel it in my knees, and I got a little out of breath. So that's a, that's a good sign. That's the first time I've been able to do anything close to jogging at all. So uh, my knees are getting stronger every day. So thanks for asking, son. You're welcome. I mean, as far as actually going into a trot or a jog, you haven't been able to do that for years, even before you had your knees replaced, if you think about it. Well, it's been knees, a while. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, been a while. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. Well, good. Excellent. But they're getting they're getting much better by uh, oh, another six months. Uh, they should be back to what they were before I started being bothered with arthritis. So, okay. Billy so McGee's, that, Billy that's my update. What? Billy McGee says, "Take it easy, young man." That's what my doctor said. He said, "Don't overdo," and of course, I always overdo. <laughs> and he always listens to his doctor. Yeah, so. right. Anytime Just, somebody tells me not to do something. That's a good indication. That's what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go over a couple things. Um, I actually had a question. I, I think it was Bruce Peter who made a comment on uh, the last couple of videos, 347 and 348, where I was doing the cutout, taking it from the paper pattern to the MDF pattern to the HDPE pattern. Um, first things first is... If you're not cutting a lot of something, you could stay with that MDF pattern and not even make one out of HDPE. You just won't be able to cut hundreds or, you know. Well, you can probably do a hundred with the, with the MDF pattern, but yeah. over a period of, of making a hundred cutouts, uh, the, the MDF will wear and you'll start getting some spots on it that are not right. So, yeah. Uh, but if... When you first make your first MDF, make an extra, and then you got uh, you probably got a pattern for making a couple hundred cutouts if you don't want to go for the HDPE. Second question he had is, <coughs> why did I use the profile bit to make the initial cut on the MDF going around the shape? Um, couple different reasons. He said, why didn't you use the 60 degree bit? Why didn't you use the the uh, spiral upcut bit. I didn't use a 60 degree bit. I could have used a 60 degree bit. I didn't use it because I wanted to use my DeWalt. My 60 degree bit was over in my uh, Ryobi or my rigid router, and I didn't. I just am more comfortable using the the DeWalt. But you could have easily used the 60 degree bit, and it would have worked just as good. Um, I wouldn't have used the spiral, however. Because that takes out more wood at a time, and you really want to try and stay pretty close to that line on your initial cut. And with the spiral bit, you have less control if you're going three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch deep. Um, you're taking out more wood, so it's a little tougher to hold a line. Um, I, I felt much more comfortable holding that line with the profile bit. If you're having trouble visualizing what he's saying, watch the video that he made. It'll explain it all. 347 and 348. Yeah, watch the videos if you're having trouble trying to understand what he's talking about. But if you have seen the videos, that's the reason that, that I didn't use the 60 or the, the spiral. Um, and I feel like uh, in some of those tight spots, I could get in a little bit closer and have a little bit better control with, the, uh, like at the top, 
where the eagle is and that kind of stuff. I feel like it could get in there a little bit tighter with the uh, profile bit rather than the the spiral for sure. The 60 I could have definitely, but I could go deeper and take more more wood out with the uh, with the profile by going deeper. Anyway, but you could absolutely use the 60 degree, so that's no problem at all. So, uh, if you guys have questions, we'll take questions on that. When and if you uh, you have any, or you can email me. So uh, let me tell you some of the folks that are here. Yeah. Tex from New York, Disbrick Dooley from New York, Billy McGee. Um, All the way from New York. Bill Bye. Ross from Cocoa Beach, Florida. George Scott, Peyton, Texas. Donna Beckenmeyer from Must South Must be around Florida. 10 o'clock in New York. Uh, uh, two hours difference. Boo Gray two from hours? Texas. Nine. Yeah, because it's daylight savings time. Oh, okay. Who? Boo Gray from Texas. Grant Corrigan from Clearwater, Florida. Texas, happy birthday, Dave. Robert hey, guys. Boyle, Texas. Thank you very much. Uh, Andy Littleton, Edmond, Oklahoma. Not for another week, Bob, though. Bob Martin, Newberry Park, California. Bob from Brunswick, Brunswick, Canada. How's the sound, guys? We want to see if the sound, if we have any issues with the sound yet. We've got the got the microphone on now. Scott Boslow, Pennsylvania. Larry Gannett, Iowa. Steve Coyne, Ohio. Victoria Miller, Georgia. Wow. Hi, Victoria. Hope you're feeling Hi, better. Hi, Victoria. Yeah. Um, Don from South uh, Oregon. Arnold from Manchester, Tennessee. Carl Schultz, Columbus, Georgia. Wow. Bill Do we have Ross. any other countries uh, other than I'm Canada? Get, I'm getting there. Bill Ross from says happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, We're having the party tomorrow. It's a week early. Susan yeah. Alexander from just outside of Chicago. Um, Hi, Sue. Indianapolis. Sound is good. Excellent. Sound is great. Good. Sound is good. Great. Sound great. Um, good to hear. Colorado. Let's see. Sound is decent. A couple seconds of wobble a minute or two ago. Well, we're, we're yeah. Uh, maybe a... Deck detector from Ireland. Ireland. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. We had a visitor from Canada today. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, Victoria says, are we still coming to Atlanta yet next month? Yes, ma'am, we are. Yeah, I'll be talking about that in a, mi in a couple minutes here. We're definitely coming to Atlanta next month. Um, I'm not going to be there, but yeah. Leo Martin says, uh, five below zero in northern New York. <laughs> Eesh. Ouch. It, it was about 75 here in Arizona today. It wasn't yeah. that warm. It was well, a nice day. Well, it seemed like it. It was it a was nice day. I never did put on any heavy clothes. I was wearing a light shirt all day, and I was comfortable. Even when I was doing my walk, uh, I had a light shirt on. So um, uh, I've got a couple comments, uh, emails, and maybe even a comment on the channel that uh, as you're going through YouTube, uh, we've started running ads. We've actually, uh, Dad and I filmed a little 45-second blurb commercial thing. And so periodically, you guys might see an ad uh, just directing people over to the to the YouTube channel. I've started doing a little bit of advertising, and it's based on searches within um, YouTube. Like when somebody goes on and searches woodworking or wood sign making or whatever, or routed wood signs. Yeah, any number of different keywords that I've uh, that I've put in there started running some ads. So if you guys uh, see that. If you guys see those ads, I'd love a heads up on that. Just shoot me a, a an email or a comment on I the channel one, or whatever. I, I one. know you were watching one morning and saw. Yeah, one. my yeah. I saw one on my TV. Not I wasn't on my computer. I was on my TV, so I couldn't click on anything. But the ad that we filmed came up on my TV uh, because I was watching YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So if you got, I would I would really love to get some feedback from you guys. What you think of it, number one, and number two, if you actually see it, that would be kind of cool. Alan Smith says, I've seen it a few times. Really? Wow. That's good. Good, good to know that it's being shown. Excellent. Yeah, we're paying for it. We're getting our money's worth then. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. That's good. Okay, what else we got? Um, so I guess the next thing is I'm going to do a little demo, like I've been talking about. So, good. Let's get into something that uh, is of interest. Delvin says he's seen it. Um... Thank you, Billy. Um, so back in the back in the way back in the 70s when we were carving signs, Dad was doing most of the carving. I was 
his assistant at that point. Oh, back in the day. Yeah. Um, we used to do a lot of signs and, and paint the letters. And, uh, you know, you I don't know where you got that reflective glass bead, but you must have picked it up at a sign. Well, yeah, I was at probably at a show someplace, and I saw the reflective glass bead that they used to put on uh, even on big, uh, you know, big billboard signs. And I thought that would be kind of neat to put that on individual letters on small signs. So I did. So he did, and um, I was playing around with it uh, over the last few days. So um, I, don't think you can see it. I don't know whether this is going to show up. We've got Vicky with a flashlight over there. So this is the same uh, kind of stuff that they use on uh, highway signs. Like when you're going down the highway and it's dark and your headlights hit it and it reflects right back at your car. Um, now this one I wasn't really happy with. I painted the letters the way, now the way you used to do it, you'd paint the letters and then you'd let it set for a while or you would put the glass bead on immediately? Yeah, what? because I used Verithane and I would, I would put it on and it was a real thick coat. Uh, and within, within five minutes, then I would use a salt shaker and just shake it right on there. Okay. Uh, so, and then, of course, after it was on there, within a few minutes, I'd dump the excess off. So what, what I've done here is I let this set for actually two hours because I didn't want the glass bead to, to sink clear in there too far. So I wanted it to set on top but still be able to grip. Ideally, I think the... The theory is you want the glass bead to like sink in about halfway so that it's got a grip, but that some of it's sticking out to reflect. So I wasn't really happy with this. I let it set two hours and it was still tacky. And then I put the glass bead on. I didn't feel like it worked as good as it should have. So um, then I played around and I about an hour ago, I'm going to try this. Yeah, it's been about an hour I painted some more letters on a different piece, and I'm actually going to sprinkle this. Uh, what you paint with? This is with the one shot. This is white enamel uh, with the one shot paint. Yeah, I, we don't use Verithane anymore. Uh, it's just because it's uh, they don't make it like they used to. Yeah, they used to make Verithane in colors. So all I do is this is a this is a glass bead. That we, uh, I just bought on Amazon. We got it in our store now, actually. And I think it was like $17 for this whole thing, which will last you like a lot. A long yeah, time. I've got some that I bought 10 years ago. I don't use it too often, but uh, it lasts a long time because you're going to recover everything that's not on the letter itself by dumping it off like in a pan like this. Then you recover it so you don't lose it. It's, uh, uh, that's so. I, that's what I'm going to do right now. And then most of that is stuck on there. Okay. Somebody said we should turn off the light and try it that way. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. So I just use this little scoop thing and just sprinkle it on there, just like I just did. All right. <laughs> that should show up real well. Well, camera's trying to focus, and it's it's not turning. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. We've never done this on video before, so not sure if it's working. But anyway, you guys, if you can see that. But I took the other one, the first one that he did, and set it across the room, turned off the lights, and put the flashlight on it. Let me see if just I can assuming it would like a car headlight, and it just showed right up real well. Lift it up. All right. Sorry for the bouncy camera here. Turn it a little bit. A little more. That Can't thing. quite show. No. Anyway, guys, trust us. It works. Yeah. It works. So then, you know, I'm using this. Vicky let me use her little roaster pan here. And I'll just... Um, especially for signs that are, you know, like going at the end of a driveway or they're going, going out someplace where if a car pulls in someplace, the headlights uh, shine on that. It'll uh, it'll shine right back at you. Yeah, it, it actually, up. yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I've been using it, it here. for 50 years. Yeah, and a lot of you guys already use it. You know about it. But if you're putting out signs that need to have a, a reflective, it's just as simple as that. 
paint it on there, leave it set for, now I, again, I left it set for about an hour. This one I left set for two hours and felt like it sunk in too much. This looks like it's sitting right on top, which is exactly so what I wanted. it wasn't quite dry then. That's no, it's still tacky. Absolutely, still tacky. Because this stuff stays tacky, like I, you have to let it set overnight. It's not a quick dry at all. It sets overnight. It takes hours for it to actually get uh, get dry to the touch. So um, just gives you a little bit extra yeah. to do on your signs if somebody wants something extra. Yeah, if you're doing a ranch sign or you know something that somebody great wants looking somebody... sign even without even without glass on it. Yeah, yeah. It. Uh, I love the cedar. This is that western red cedar that I have some pieces of. Oh no, but I anyway. haven't lost my pan yet. Anyway, that is, uh, that's the demo. It wasn't nothing, you know, super, uh, super complicated, but I wanted you guys to see. Now, I know that they also make, um, they make a medium that you paint on over something else that, uh, or they used to anyway. So there's another way to do it. If that is already dry, then you can get something else that is a medium just for a uh, glass bead that you brush on there, it's clear, and then you put the glass bead on that. I've never used that, we never had to. We always put it on when exactly, it's wet. Exactly, yeah. I haven't, I, I haven't used this in actually a long time, you know, but uh, but it is kind of cool to know if you that you can do it. So, next on the agenda, we are gonna talk about WBC, Woodwork, uh, Workbench Con, easy, easy, for for, easy for me to say. Workbench Con in Atlanta is uh, February 20, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. We're coming in, we're flying in the night uh, or the afternoon of the, 20, the 20th, which is uh, Wednesday, I think, because I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we're going to plan a meetup like, like we did last year. Uh, we did a meetup. On Sunday morning, um, we're leaving a little bit earlier this year than we did last year. So we're going to plan it for 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Um, and that's the 24th. The 24th. And that will be in the hit. The, this year, the uh, WBC is, uh, is actually at the Hilton. Last year, it was at the Marriott Marquis. It was the Marriott Marquis. But evidently, they're like right next to each other. There's like a skywalk that connects them. So we'll be doing the meetup and the WBC, the Workbench Con, is at the Hilton. And the meetup that we're going to do is going to be somewhere in the lobby of the Hilton. So what we'll do... Your meetup is what with people that want to come in and talk to you. They want to come over and meet us or talk to us. Last year... They're going to had... leave me here all alone. Oh, you poor yeah. baby. Yeah, you'll be on vacation. Without us here. Anyway, so um, last year, Victoria Miller, Steve McCullough, uh, Chuck and Linda, and uh, Corduroy. So um, I'm hoping you guys can make it. And anybody else, I've talked to a couple people about it. So it's definitely going to be 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, somewhere in the lobby of the Hilton. And we'll have a better layout of what it looks like when we get there on the 20th. So we'll probably do a little live broadcast and let everybody know. Um, and this is next month, February, so probably February 20th in the evening, we'll probably have scoped it out enough that we'll know exactly where in there we're going to meet. So um, we're looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Now, Workbench Con is a blast anyway, but meeting with you guys is always just like, you know, a real kick. Well, it's just getting away from me for three or four days got to be worth oh, it. Oh, no. It has <laughs> nothing to do with that. Um, so, let's see. What else did we... Uh, do we have any questions? Anything you guys want to know? Anything about... Uh, I had a guy... Uh, it might be of interest. I had a guy uh, with an email question today. Wants to know what's our favorite five woods to carve signs out of. Yeah. Uh, so, I thought, well, we might bring that up. And just in case somebody wants to know what... Uh, what are your favorite favorite, favorite five woods to favorite curse? Favorite faves. Fa favorite favorite. Fi fiber favors. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, this is actually my favorite. I like cedar. Um, uh, I like, although I like the white cedar a little bit better, like the cedar fencing, which I think is like, I don't know for sure, but I think it's a northern white cedar. 
That's my favorite. Uh, it's soft. It carves great. It looks great. Uh, then my probably my second favorite would be the Red Cedar because it still carves great. Not quite as well as the um, as the White Cedar, but that would probably be my second favorite. Third would probably be Redwood, uh, which is what I grew up using. We used Redwood. Yeah, you buy, buy we, truckloads of Redwood. Yeah, literally. Um, fourth would probably be um, Pine, uh, which is what this is. Probably Select Pine would be my fourth favorite. Uh, my fifth favorite will probably be, honestly, that white poplar I've been using. Man, that stuff is just awesome. It carves great and looks spectacular. Um, then maybe that Beetle Kill Pine that I made the um, Rock and H sign with. Um, that's so six. That's six, you know. And, you know, I've been carving more and more different things. I carved some Aspen, worked really well. So there's... There's a lot of different woods, but those are probably my my favorites. I just in, thought, in I just thought, you know, yeah, that's a good somebody question. that hasn't uh, that hasn't asked that question might like the answer. So yeah, so you know, now how that relates to you, I don't know. It depends on what you have available to you in Atlanta or in Minnesota or in Ireland. Yeah, I've had I have no I've no, had questions no idea. From people on the East Coast that couldn't get the. The uh, the cedar fencing that we use that we use you know all the time they can't get it back there so they wanted to know what they could use so that northern uh, northern white cedar is good uh, I like basswood for you people down south basswood is uh, I hate basswood he doesn't like That's basswood it. but I, I like it. it it carves it's a little a little hard to carve but it has no grain uh, so you never get any jumping it uh, and it makes nice signs. Um, that's, that's the wood that that most uh, of these of the big uh, architects use. <clears throat> Guys that are that are, that are really wood carvers that make these uh, these uh, tobacco Indians. You know the big Indian statues, cigar store Indians. They usually make those out of basswood, so it's a uh, it's a well known wood. Um, but what I would suggest for you guys is experiment. Keep your eyes open. And try everything. Try every wood that you have available to you. Try it all. Take You don't have to buy a bunch of it. Try little pieces of whatever you have available to you and find out what you have available and what you like. Um, because every part of the country or world is different. Down in the south, they use a lot of cypress. And, you know, so there's all, all kinds of different the only possibilities. Thing, the only thing that, that we don't recommend would be pallet wood. Uh, generally, that's not not good for signs. True. <clears throat> and nor plywood. Uh, plywood doesn't work well for signs. Although I'm starting to consider that certain plywoods. There's a lot of cheap plywoods that I would never recommend. But there's some solid core plywoods and really quality plywoods out there that I've been thinking about trying that don't have voids. Um, and there's some, you know, obviously advantages of being able well, to... Well, there are good plywoods that yeah. don't have voids. Marine plywoods don't have voids, but they're still plies. Yeah. And uh, they don't they don't curve signs very well. Well, anyway, I may, <coughs> I may play with that and, and, you know, and try some, uh, some different things. The other, the other ones that we don't really recommend are things like teak. Um, an island uh, uh, indigenous mahogany. Uh, yeah, island indigenous uh, woods <laughs> that may have sand or silica in there. Yes, that is. That that'll really tear up your router bits. Yeah, some of the some of the island woods do. In fact, they when they're sucking up water, they suck up sand, and so you can get sparks off of your router bit when you're carving them. Literally, there's sand in there. So. Yeah, and that's why a, a lot of woodworkers. Uh, Furniture makers won't have those kinds of woods in there because um, it just tears up it the tears up your saw tools. blades yeah. and all different kinds of stuff. All right, all right, Larry Broom says, "Is this a good time to send you seven router bits to be sharpened?" I wanted to wait till after the holidays. Sure, absolutely. Send them in. We get them every day. I sharpen router bits every day. Send them. Alan McLean says you should put beads on when the paint is still wet so they stick. Yeah, that's I did, Alan. This is the paint is still wet. I just didn't I didn't do it right after I painted it because I didn't want the um, the beads to to fall in there too much. 
I wanted just a good tack to it. So it, yeah, they're definitely still wet. That's why the, the glass bead is stuck there. So the, the paint is definitely still wet. Yeah, when I used to do them on Verithane, right, because I used colored Verithane, but within five minutes, I had the glass bead on there when that when the very thing was still wet. Don Brown says, "Are you still are you using Helmsman's spar varnish? Spar urethane? Yeah, I do. I, I still use the, the Helmsman spar urethane. Um, I, I and I've got the Czar water based polyurethane. The difference between the two, um, I've heard that, I, and my experience so far, I've only been using a couple years. My experience is the Czar." Water-based polyurethane is a little bit better outside in extreme uh, weather. Um, but the uh, Helmsman, I like it if I'm using, especially if I'm using pine or something that I want a little bit darker, richer look to it because the Helmsman has an amber color to it. At least the oil base does. The water base, I haven't used that yet, so I don't know. It might be clear. But the oil base Helmsman spar has an amber color to it, so it'll put an amber color. The Czar water based polyurethane is crystal clear. So if I don't want whatever I'm finishing, if I don't want it to get a, a shade or two darker, I'll use the Czar for sure because it's crystal clear, whereas the Helmsman is a, has an amber color to it. All right, Billy McGee says I work for the Washington State Department of Transportation. When we're putting out stripes on the freeway, we put the glass over the stripes so they reflect it, so they reflect at night. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they, they put the glass when it's uh, when they painted the painted stripe is still wet, so they put the glass. Yeah. On I'm assuming is that wet. right, Billy? I'm assuming. No, no. <laughs> I've seen them do it. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Do you put finish over the beads? I don't. I don't. That is the last. <laughs> that's the last step right there. I knew I was going to get that question, I, and I was going to answer it. But no, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to impede that reflectability uh, of the glass bead. That that should be stuck good enough that you know, unless all the finish goes on first. Yeah, the finish goes on first. Then I put the paint after the finish is on. Then the glass bead, and that's it. All right. Victoria Mueller says I need to make sure I get there early early so I get a parking spot and not get lost this time. <laughs> That's right. She did last time. This is uh, Todd Scholl says when we're, when we're gone to Atlanta, you'll get some peace and quiet. <laughs> he also says, he said, I get wood from old wood cedar telephone poles. From old, what? Old wood, red, old, hold on, I lost it. Old wood cedar telephone poles. I'll be there. I didn't know they made huh. telephone poles out of cedar. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that, that's that, interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. You can reclaim old cedar uh, telephone, telephone poles, poles and cut it down into Do they into not have sign uh, blanks? Do that's they not great. have creosote and, and that kind of stuff in there, Todd? Is there no uh, oils and preservatives and stuff like that that you have to deal with? Uh, Victoria Mueller says she likes basswood. Carl Saltz says down here in northeast Florida, we can't get the fencing. All of ours is treated. I like the red cedar and... Leyland Cypress, when I can get it. Mm. Bruce Peters says, I recommend no one uses treated lumber. Yeah, I don't use treated lumber. But. Okay. Biker. All right. This is John. He said, John. Jernigan. Buff Hiker Slim. John, I see you this time. He says, I have a question. Who's better, Dave or Eric? Depending on the subject. Yeah, it depends on what your, you know, what the competition yeah, is. Yeah, better a better husband is Eric. A better <laughs> bachelor is Dave. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, deck detector. Nice try, John. Yeah. Well, says, one one thing I want to mention. And this is just in case there's a sign carver in and around Arizona. I went. To, I drove down to Phoenix yesterday, and as going through Wickenburg, they have Wickenburg is the team roping capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And there must have been 40,000 wagons and trucks and yeah. horses and cowboys out there. If there had been somebody that would wanted to go out there and carve signs, they'd probably made $1,000 yesterday. I don't know if there was anybody out there. But Wick Wickenburg would be an excellent place mm -hmm. for something like that to go out and carve signs on site. Yeah. 
Uh, I agree. Tosh it's Tosh just Tosh. because I haven't. Yeah. Todd Schultz, when he talked about the <coughs> oil poles, he says there's only oil on the bottom of the pole when it has, when it has, when it was in the ground. Oh. Other than that, right, the rest good. of the pole was just cedar. I'll be darned. So good John to know. said he meant at carving. Oh, at carving. Well, who's better carver, you or your dad? Dad. That that satisfied. Are you happy, John? That's not true. I taught him everything I know, and then he learned stuff on his own. So he's the best carver. Uh, Dave Stover John. says telephone seat, tel uh, cedar telephone poles do not have creosote. But they do have a heck of a lot of nails and staples. Oh, they have a lot. A lot of nails and oh. staples. Yeah, so I guess you would have. That'll raise, that'll raise hell with us all. Yeah, or a router bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. How far are you from Wickenburg? About uh, two hours. Two hours. Exactly yeah. two hours. I yeah. drive it all the time. Two hours. It's a, an hour to Wiki up, and then another hour on to Wickenburg. And then 50 more miles to Phoenix. Yep. So we have David Crawford from Saska Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada. Canada. Welcome, David. Thanks for watching. All right, more questions? If there's no more questions, we'll... <laughs> I can't think of anything pertinent to say other um, than thank everybody for their birthday wishes. And, uh, yeah. We'll have a party tomorrow, and birthday's not till the seventeenth. But Brad and Diana are here. Wow, Brad and Diana. Brad? Oh yeah. But he's Brad's home. he's home. I think he's home. No, I thought he was still at work. I saw a picture of him playing. With maybe he's fingers. maybe he's home. All right. Mike Sh 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 Shinley. That's it. Happy birthday, Dave, and many more. Jim Clark says we live in the deep woods, not close to any town, southeast Georgia. Wow. Deck detector says, can I carve on wood slice? Wood slice? Ah, Brad is home. Thank you, Diana. Wood slice like a, um, like, like a, a slab? Like a round? Like a round? Absolutely. I'm getting ready to do that tomorrow. Yeah, you were working on that big one today. I'm working on one right now that I'm yeah. going to be doing a demo slice on. like a cookie. Yeah, like a, absolutely. Yeah, and you can buy the small ones, literally the small ones, carved with a, uh, some sort of a letter in there, and make a set of five or six of those, or four or six of those for coasters. They make excellent coasters. Uh, there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah, we've carved on slabs for years. Um, getting ready Don't to carve it. cottonwood, though. Yeah, that's, cottonwood's that's bad. That's terrible yeah. stuff to carve. Yeah. All right, Carl Salt says, uh, what causes my spiral upcut to chatter, and how can I mitigate it? Okay, uh, so if you're getting chatter, well, uh, Dad, you answer that one. You yeah, if you're getting chatter, probably sticking out of the router bit, or the, uh, the call it too far. Uh, if it's, uh, if everything is right and it's in the call it as far as it'll go and it's solid, you shouldn't get any chatter on it. Uh, if you do, just hold your router a little tighter. And go a little slower. Uh, let's see, Rick Birchfield says, have you ever carved cherry, and how does it carve? Yes, you have. I have, I have carved cherry. You I have, too. My, my cutting board it, was It cherry. carves hard, but it's beautiful wood, and it yeah. it makes gorgeous signs. It's yeah. expensive, but... Yeah. Uh, I like cherry. I, yeah, I mean, again... Yeah, it's, but it's hard wood, and it carves hard, so you have to be careful with it. But, it, but it's consistent hard. It's not like hard, it's soft, true. hard, soft. It's all hard, and, and if you've got it... You know, you, rather than, that's easier to carve than hard, soft, hard, soft. So yeah, I carved some uh, cutting boards. Um, yeah, I like I like cherry, and man, it is beautiful. It gorgeous. Carl, it's gorgeous. Carl Salt says patience. Yeah, don't have any of that. <laughs> no patience. <laughs> all right, just me says uh, when searching online for Zara, all I'm finding is interior. No, they make Zara. You have exterior. Yeah. It's exterior. Yeah, they make exterior as well. They make both. They both make both interior and exterior. Where do you buy it? I buy it at uh, True Value, my local True Value hardware. Okay. They have the whole line of Czar. But yeah, they make interior and exterior. If you can't find it, go online and do a search for, uh, for True Value. Then go into their paint department and you can probably order it. I'm going to answer this one. Sean Sprouse says, where do you get your slabs? Okay. We get our slabs in Las Vegas at a place called um, Reclaim Secrets. 
Also, that's one. We also get it some or down in Phoenix at a place called the Wine Glass Mill. Yeah. But they said you should be able to find any um, any town, any big suburban town should have a sawmill, and you can get them. Yeah. So they can also buy them if you don't want the big huge ones. You can buy them on Etsy. Uh, Etsy has Etsy has two or three stores where you can buy the. Uh, by the slabs, the little, the, the little, smaller right. slabs, yeah, the yeah. little round. up to twelve. Yeah, I think I've got some that are like twelve to thirteen inches. Yeah. All the but, bits. But yeah. you know what? You can check in your local, your local town for an arborist. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what do they call that? An arborist, right? Yeah. The, the tree people, because there's all, more and more. There are people that are taking fallen trees when they're taking out stuff. And they're uh, recycling those, and they're cutting slabs. That's and what stuff that in Phoenix does. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's what uh, this place actually, Porter Barnwood. Didn't they? They had slabs when we went there, right? Yeah. That's one of the places we visited in Phoenix. Oh, what's the the, the other place was uh, uh, Lavore. Um, that's the wine glass sawmill. Yeah, wine glass sawmill. Yeah. And Lavore Smith, I think. Out of uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scott Boslow's question, how does Ryan organize his layout letters in the file boxes? Does he have different sizes in the same drawer, different fonts in the same drawer? Normally what he does, what I've taught him to do is um, different size, different boxes will be different sizes. He'll have one box for one inch, one box for inch and a half, one box for two inch. And then if there's not enough drawers to have a di an individual character in that drawer, then he might have a little divider and have the A and the B in one drawer and the C and the D in the next drawer and so on and so on. That's the way I did it when I was up in Oatman. Yeah, I've done it that way for Yeah, and that years. works really well. Gary Litchfield says, cherry cutting boards. Any suggestions for generic boards to sell at shows and what to carve on it? You can buy those. Oh my gosh. Like you were talking about. Yeah, last week. actually, the, the most popular, one of the most popular and the most sought after is bamboo. Uh, you can buy those on, you can buy them on Amazon, but if you want to buy a quantity of them, go to some place like Alibaba uh, and buy them direct from China. It'll take you a month to get them, but they're <clears throat> probably about a third of the price as buying them on Amazon. Uh, Dave Stover says, my ex-father-in-law gave me 100 one by 8 by 8 walnut and cherry boards for Christmas. Now I'm starting to clean and enjoy Wow. Wow. Nice. 100 boards? That is uh, his father-in-law? Ex-father-in-law. His ex- yeah. Wow. Todd, yeah, that's a- Todd Schultz wow. says, we just got our first sawmill here in North Dakota in my lifetime. I've never seen one. First what? Sawmill. sawmill. Oh. Really? Jim Clark. He said, I retired last year and have ordered my supplies from you to start writing signs. Love the information from your videos. Thank you, Jim. Um, we appreciate that. Our, that's our pleasure. Hey, that's, thank you so that's much. That's why we do what we do. Is just because of people like you who want to want to get started doing something that they've always wanted to do but wasn't sure how to do it. That's why we do what we do to help you get started. Andy Littleton wants to know where you get those boxes for the letters. Lowe's. We just picked them up at Lowe's. Well, they have them too. At, didn't they have them at? Uh, Gosh, they got Harbor them at Harbor Freight. Freight. Yeah, Harbor those just little. You know, it's the little plastic boxes that you would put. You know, random screws and nails and you know that kind of stuff. Those little plastic boxes with the drawers. I bought most yeah. of mine from Lowe's. I yeah. still got. I've even got some extra, but uh, I buy them from Lowe's. Yeah, that's where we got them. Susan Alexander wants to know how you recommend storing your bits besides leaving them in the plastic tubes. Um, well, Dad made a little block. Uh, I yeah. made a block with holes in it. Yeah. I cut it on the laser so that it's all fit together uh, like a little castle, but it's just got holes in it. But you can take a 2 by 4 or 2 by 6 or 2 by 8 and just drill quarter in holes yeah. in it uh, yeah. if you want to make your own. They're, they're easy to make. I've made them for 60, 70 years probably. Yeah. Uh, just take a just take a block. My first one was I just took a two before and just drill quarter inch holes in them and that's all you need to do. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? So it looks like the signal was good, the sound is was holding up and everything was good, huh? Excellent. Bruce Peters says Dave Stover, if you can't use those boards, I know someone who can. <laughs> That's a lot of boards. 
What were they, walnut and, and some other species in there? All right, guys, that's it. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Um, that was excellent, Jason. Excellent. Good, good, good. So uh, Monday's video is going to be another large sign carvers of the day. Uh, some just amazing, amazing, especially first-time carvers, some really, really good ones. So be watching for that. Wednesday's video, I'm starting a brand-new pro uh, project. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's a redwood slab. So I'm starting that. Uh, should have the first video on that on Wednesday. I don't know how far I'll get on it, uh, but I'm working on it. But I'm going to be doing something brand new that is just in my head that I've never done before. And as far as I know, nobody's ever done before. Um, Somebody asked if we were going to do a video from the party, and we are going to do Yeah, something. we're going to do a video tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do a live uh, tomorrow when the Bruce sisters Peter are here. Bruce said his second class is tomorrow. Oh, that's exciting, Bruce. Let me know how that turns out. That's fantastic. That's cool. Versus, have a great evening. Have a great weekend. So. Thanks, guys. Are you going to give them the, uh, their instructions? To... I'm just saying. All right, guys. We have s we have 17 thumbs up. We last time I said yeah, last week, I, know, I said I something can't... about uh, showing me your thumbs up, and we got at the end of I don't know within a couple of days we had like 147. So. <laughs> Let's see how many thumbs up we can get tonight on this video. Give us some likes and shares. Likes, shares. Give us some love. <laughs> All right. All right, going. guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, um, we love you all. You, we're just like family to us. So we're going to include you in the party tomorrow if you can watch. But it'll be on the channel. If you can't watch live, it'll be on the channel. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend. And... Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, which I'm sure all of you have, but if you haven't, we'd love for you to, and then click that little bell icon, and check out uh, the Instagram, too, if you're not on Instagram. Instagram's awesome. I'm make a wood sign on Instagram. Anyway, guys, love you all. Have a great weekend. We'll see you what soon. What time tomorrow? We don't know. We're, yeah. we're winging it, Susan. Yeah, we don't know when the girls are going to show up. So it'll be, it'll probably be middle of the day sometime. We'll see. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a good night. And